This is WBCN in Boston. We have a special guest here, uh, very special to me at least, and I think to you also, Ray Manzarek, who is, uh, uh, if not a part of all of our collective um, memories, then at least part of mine, and I'm very glad to see you here. <laughs> Hiya, Boston. How's everybody doing? Ray, you have a new band together, and it's called Night City. Night City, exactly. Tell us about how this came about. What, what have you been doing since your well, last... Well, uh, let's see. Night City recording. came into being in Laurel Canyon in Los Angeles, and uh, took about a year and a half to put uh, the proper combination together and get the uh, record at, together and get it out on the streets. So uh, it's been a year and a half in the making. After doing a couple of solo albums for Mercury, I I got tired of being a solo artist and missed having a rock and roll band, missed having a bunch of guys to uh, play with and live with and fight with and suffer with and all the things that rock and roll musicians do and giving themselves up to the music, that kind of thing. The people I had been working with in the studio and on the road, just uh, somehow it just wasn't quite right. I really wasn't getting off. So I wanted a new rock and roll band. I wanted a bunch of guys that were ready to go out and tour America and raise some hell. And that's Night City. It sounded like that last night when I walked in. Uh, as we were discussing earlier, the uh, the set times are a little bit obscured by the fact that there's a lot of equipment being switched around. Down yeah, there. yeah. We're at Paul's Mall tonight and tomorrow and Sunday, but uh, exactly when the show times are, who knows? Well, you can always call Paul's Mall and find out when is Night City hitting the stage. Right. That's what I'd like to know. Because <laughs> it sounded me. like a real band. Oh yeah, we had a great time. Great, great band. I'm really happy with it. Everybody in the band is really an excellent musician, and Noah James, the lead singer, is uh, going to be one of your uh, favorites uh, of the future. People are going to fall in love with him as soon as they find out what Noah's poetry and songs are all about. Very unusual guy, very obscure kind of person, very uh, really off-the-wall guy from the South somewhere, from Virginia, and that whole... Uh, that, that mid mid Atlantic uh, belt down there, where uh, Southern poets and uh, Thomas Wolfe and William Faulkner and people like that come from, and that's what Noah James is, except he's a rock and roller and a poet at the same time. He's got a real strong voice. Yeah. yeah curiously <laughs> enough, he's spent a lot of time in Alexandria, Virginia, and uh, so did Jim Morrison, which. Uh, you know, I didn't know anything about it until I got to talking to Noah about where he was from and all that. And he said he'd uh, been a lot in Alexandria. And I said, well, far out. And Morrison was there, too. So uh, there's a lot of similarities between those two guys. Morrison was an Army brat, was he not? Navy. Navy brat. Navy brat. As right. I am. But Are Noah you? James was a resident of the Alexandria. Yeah, area. right. Yeah. Uh huh. Another Navy brat. Huh? Mm -hmm. But you were an Army brat. <laughs> no, I was Navy. I, Navy. I was under the. Uh, well, Morrison, Morrison was Navy too. Morrison was Navy yeah, also. Right. His father was an admiral. <clears throat> Mine was captain. <laughs> <laughs> his father lost his gig too. He got passed over for promotion. He mm -hmm. was one of the youngest one-star admirals. Then when it came time to become a two-star admiral, it was right after Jim allegedly pulled it out in Miami, mm -hmm. the famous Miami incident. Mm -hmm. And about a year or two after that, uh, the uh, admiral just resigned because he got mm -hmm. passed over for oh, yes. promotion. It all goes into our collective memory banks in the computer center in uh, Maryland, eh? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. But uh, when, I, when I walked in last night, I'm, I'm going back because... Uh, Come uh, smoke, smoke-filled rooms and uh, <laughs> stumbling people or not. I want to see that rock and roll band because it sounded really good last night. Good, good, and I'm glad for you because I know you know working in the studio is not like having a band on the road. Two it's, different things. Yeah, two different entirely things. Entirely different. You get those live bodies feeding energy back and forth to each other. So if you come down tonight or Saturday or Sunday, feed energy to us. That's what we need. We don't need uh, placid people. We want people who are. Who want to get it on and have a good time? Yeah, you know? and make demands of you as performers. Sure, the, <laughs> you know, all about. the more you egg us on, man, the meaner and harder we'll play. So that's what it's all about. That's okay, I asked you to think about a record you wanted to turn people onto last night, and I want to play a cut from your album all right. and then come back and uh, talk a couple minutes more, and maybe you'll be thinking some more in that time about what you know you would like to play for people. All right. So uh, I think one of the main points of the fact that 
you said the band came together in Los Angeles. Everybody at this point, at least in, in the vacuum uh, pressured radio industry, thinks of L.A. as the home of Jackson Brown and the Eagles and all that. Well, I still think of it as the home of the the uh, the Doors, uh, Arthur Lee and Love, mm -hmm. Steely Dan, and uh, now Night City. Cause exactly. It's, it's not exactly like the Eagles. I think it has a lot more of a city feel to it. It's, you know, it's concrete mm -hmm. and... It's everything in L.A. is besides being out there in Southern California where they used to be cowboys and Indians. Right. This is a title song from Night City. That's Night City by Night City. Do you do that live? Your eyes. Do you do that live? Yeah, sure. Okay. We do them all live. Do everything on the record live? Everything on the record we do, right. Okay. Maybe we don't do the instrumental all the time in the pyramid. We do that uh, depending on how how large the crowd is. The smaller the crowd and the later the night and the more tired we are, then we stick that one in. But for the most part, we do uh, all the songs in the album. What what is your connection with with um, the pyramid revival? I, mean, I can't call it a phenomenon because it's been existent for so many so many right. I mean it's, thousands it goes of back. years, yeah. <laughs> about five thousand years, right? Uh, well, uh, I did an album called The Golden Scarab that uh, mm -hmm. some people might remember, some people might have missed, and I've always been into the Egyptian thing. You know, I don't I don't know um, why all of a sudden pyramids are coming back uh, and why there's such a big thing about pyramids. Other than people are looking for uh, alternative sources of energy, you know, mm -hmm. now that the big oil crunch and all that has hit. So the sun is a source of energy and uh, steam uh, coming up from out of the earth and uh, the tides and pyramids. Making use of, of one's environment. Yeah, basically. some kind of energy. I don't know exactly what they do and whether it really works or not, but... Uh, I'll bet it does. I seem to remember uh, sometime a long, long time ago, someone telling me, I think it was the first person who ever told me about Edgar Casey that that there was at one time uh, a civilization that was a result of the downfall of the civilization that, that produced the pyramids, the Egyptian, uh, mm -hmm. whatever you would call it, reign, kingdom, mm -hmm. and that the pyramids were actually not built by people being whipped into, into cementing blocks together or, or building them. But but actually, it was solar power, and it was used. Uh, the lenses were used, and the rays of the sun were harnessed to to build those pyramids. Far and it was all There's a lot of speculation as to yes. how it happened. Right? Maybe the people from Atlantis <laughs> built it. Maybe they didn't. Maybe the Egyptians built uh, actually did build the pyramids, but maybe they didn't use slaves at all. Maybe the people just did it out of uh, you know love mm -hmm. of God, building a, some kind of a monument, a temple. Mm -hmm. Pyramids were actually temples to uh, the creator, the creative force. And Egypt knows? certainly wasn't the only place the pyramids were also. I mean, I, right. the Yucatan Peninsula That's of Mexico, right. there That's are certainly right. things that resemble pyramids. Sure. Well, that all comes from Atlantis. Yes. <laughs> Whatever Atlantis was, I'm afraid we're never going to know. Even Jacques Cousteau went out to find Atlantis. Did you know about that? No. Yeah, that's the next Jacques Cousteau series on TV. Whenever he gets around to getting all the film cut, he went looking for Atlantis. Underwater. Unfortunately, he said he didn't find it. Yeah. <laughs> it was probably there all along and still is. <laughs> Maybe he's not telling us. <laughs> well, Todd Rundgren's trying on his new one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw the Todd Rundgren show. We have a, a Build Your Own Pyramid uh, right. included with the album, as a matter of fact. Oh, great, great. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Todd Rundgren's <laughs> show. I thought it was awful. <laughs> so I won't say anything about it. <laughs> as long as you woke up in time to get out of the hall before they woke you up. <laughs> we shouldn't be evil. No, <laughs> no, no It will no, all come no, back. No, on. Definitely not. <laughs> well, nice to be in Boston. I'm al I always have a good time in Boston. I love the city. Nigel, the bass player, Nigel Harrison in Night City, loves Boston. He says this is the only American city he's been in where, where he really feels comfortable and really likes the people and likes the architecture and the whole thing. I guess it must really remind him a lot of London or something. I've heard that said. But you'll be happy to know, Boston, that our English bass player loves you, thinks you're terrific. And everybody would appreciate it if you'd come and see Night City. You were at Paul's Mall through Sunday night? Through Sunday night, right. 
And if you call them for show times, would you please leave a message for Ray to tell him? <laughs> <laughs> tell him to call Ray on. and let him know what time he goes on. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you introduce the next song? Because okay, I think it will this, be is, your uh, this is one song. that yeah. I like. This is one of my favorite jazz groups, jazz rock. It's not really jazz rock. It's a jazz group, although they like to get into the jazz rock thing. It's Weather Report, and uh, this is off of the album, uh, whatever the heck this album is called. You know, one of Weather Report's albums. If you're not into Weather Report, pick up a couple of their albums. They do some really great things. This one's Tail Spinning. Tail spinning is the album, as, right? As in T A L E. And this is uh, a cut called Badia. Thank you for coming by, Ray. My pleasure, babe. To reiterate, they are at the mall through Sunday night, along with the Lenny White group, and they are very, very good. Back to the rock and roll days. This is WBCN in Boston. I'm Max Ann with you until 5.55.